and we are going to go ahead and get started. Uh, I want to welcome everyone to the Better Team Skills webinar. Uh, again, this is a presentation of the New York State and CSEA Partnership for Education and Training. My name is Kyle Nurse, and I'm going to be your host for today's webinar, and I'm joined by our instructor, Ms. Cherie Holt. Now, I'm going to take this moment to point out just a couple things. First, uh, everyone is going to be muted to keep the background noise at a minimum. Um, second, if you do have questions or comments or concerns, you can go ahead and you can type them in the text chat at any time. We've been using the text chat uh, at the bottom right-hand side of your screen, um, just getting a feel for who is in today's class. Now, if the text chat box isn't open, just go ahead and click on that arrow next to, text, uh, next to the chat, uh, and it'll open up. And then I ask that you just make sure that everyone is in the to section before you go ahead and click send so that we can all see uh, your information. The second thing that I wanted to just touch base with, if you do have a question and you have a microphone and you would like to, uh, you know, ask that question, go ahead and raise your hand. The raised hand button is at the bottom of the screen next to the smiley emoticon. Uh, again, when, if you raise your hand, we'll give you the floor and then we'll answer your question in kind. Um, just do me a favor right now. I've got 39 folks on the call. Uh, if you could go ahead and hit click the raise hand button for me, just so I know that you all know where that is, I'd greatly appreciate it. All right. I've seen that the majority of you have found the raise hand button, and most of you, all of you, looks like have found the emoticon button. Um, so go ahead and bring your hand down by clicking on that same thing, raise hand. All righty, excellent, excellent, excellent. Um, again, if at any point in time you do have a question, again, you can hit us up in the chat or you can raise your hand and we will uh, give you the floor in kind. Now, as I mentioned uh, just a minute ago, today's webinar is sponsored by the New York State and CSEA Partnership for Education and Training, or as many people simply like to refer to us as the partnership. Now, for those of you who may be wondering what exactly is the partnership, um, and you're, maybe you're not familiar with us, uh, simply we're an organization that administers education and training programs for CSEA represented employees, and we do this through labor management cooperation. So again, as a whole, the partnership is funded through negotiated agreements between both CSCA and New York State. So uh, when you think of the partnership, I want you to think of in terms of what we offer, in-person classroom training, online learning, education advisement services, grants and uh, tuition benefits, labor management services, as well as a host of other education and training programs, um, including the webinar that you're in today. So, in short, again, just think of the partnership as a joint labor management organization, and our sole mission really is to promote your career mobility, improve your job skills, support your workplace safety and health, as well as promote effective labor management relations for you uh, while you're back on the job. So, if you'd like to learn a little bit more about us, uh, you can hit us up on our website or you can contact us directly. Uh, my con the contact information is on the screen right now. And I will also put that contact information up um, at the end of today's presentation. But now that you know a little bit more about the partnership, let's jump right into better team skills. And I'm going to turn it over to your facilitator, Ms. Sheree Holt. Thank you, Kyle. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. As Kyle mentioned, my name is Sheree Holt, and I want to leverage my 30 years of working with teams, developing teams, building teams, into helping you develop a better team skills today. And so at the beginning of this webinar, Kyle asked, how often have you all worked in teams? So now, let me just pause for a second. Let let me get a poll here. How many of you have worked in teams? I think I'm getting ahead of myself. How many of you have ever worked in teams? Let me see the raised hands for everybody who's worked in a team before. Worked in a team before. And so, so yeah. If you worked in a team, go ahead and raise that hand. And so 
whether you've worked in a team and it seems like a, everybody almost on here is it worked in a team or you've been a part of a team let's just begin by defining what a team is because this class is called better team skills let's start off with what is the team and so we'll define the team as a group of individuals who work together to achieve a common goal and so so even if you don't Work with the team directly I can imagine that most of you have worked with a group or an agency that have had a common goal and so you've been a part of that agency or that department's team and so it's important that you're able to work with the team to achieve the common goal so a recent study shows that 60% of employees need to work regularly regularly with others and I know people who would rather have a tooth pulled than to work with a team. They absolutely prefer to be by themselves. They don't want to depend on anybody. And so for the sake of this, the reason why I think that they don't like being a part of a team is that they've had some bad experiences. And so if you'll do me a favor, can you tell me what type of bad experiences would allow people to want to work independently and not want to work with others what type of experiences have people had so that they resist working with teams type that in the chat so again go ahead and uh put your ideas in the chat about what makes a team bad you know when you think about you know a team uh what makes it bad unreliable team members a uh, lack of work ethic on teams or oh, they're coming in fast and furiously not being professional um, now you guys are beating my eyes. Here we go. Uh, some people don't pull their weight. Um, you know, people not wanting to do anything. Uh, speed of completing tasks, lack of listening and cooperation, negative attitude, depending on others to get their part done. The big one right there won't listen to other people's viewpoints. So, as you can see, Cherie, there are a lot of ring or things that you know make a team bad when we pull the group. Yeah, Kyle, and I now I can imagine why some people would rather have a tooth pull than to be on a part of a team, especially with those type of experiences. So thank you everyone for participating. We're going to use that type of engagement all day today. And so let's move forward. So if we've had such a bad experiences with teams, why do we keep doing it? Why do we keep trying to bring people together? I think that in modern life, teams Teamwork is inevitable and essential. And yes, sometimes it can be difficult and frustrating. With that being said, we're going to consider the benefits and develop strategies to create more benefits today. So I think that you'll find your experience in a team can be significantly improved if you just listen and hang on, hang in there a little while. Hopefully, we'll create a better experience and improve your team experience. So let's look at how we can have a better idea of why we're here. Let's take a closer look at today's objectives. First, we're going to discuss the benefits of teams and the value of teamwork. We'll talk about what makes teams necessary in our work lives and why we really can't live without them. Next, we'll talk about some important qualities for the effective team member. If you're going to be a part of a team, you might as well get the most out of the experience, right? So we're going to develop how we can improve those qualities. Finally, we'll ask you to apply what you've learned to a scenario and give you an opportunity to select some of those strategies to improve the collaboration on our imaginary team today. So we're all going to be a part of a team today and we're going to work together. So pay close attention. Everything you will learn today will give you a chance to help you later on and to build your team experiences as you move forward. So let's move forward. First, let's talk about the, the value of a teamwork and the answer to the question, why do we keep to doing teams? If people have had such bad experiences, why do we keep asking them to be a part of a team? Well, when you're faced with the option to work with a team or independently, some people think I can do this faster on my own or it's going to take too long to make decisions in teams. It's like herding cats. And so the reason why we feel that way, 
let me ask you, have any of you ever felt that way? Have you ever felt like it's going to take too long with a team? I can do it faster myself. I don't want to get everybody's opinion. If you've ever felt that way, raise your hand one more time. We're getting a lot of action out of that raised hand button. I'm All right. So if you've ever felt like you could work, if you've ever felt like you could work faster alone than you could in a team, why don't you go ahead and click that raise hand button? And I see about half of the folks, at least half of the folks uh, in the room. And I, you know what? I'll go ahead and and I'll raise my hand as well. I'll be honest. <laughs> I've been there, um, and I'm seeing about half of the room, uh, Sheree. Uh, along with myself and you, now that I'm seeing him raise their hand. <laughs> yeah, and so we can do things faster on our own. Sometimes we feel like that. And even if you haven't had that thought before, it would be understandable if you did. Because there is some truth to that idea that you can work faster alone. However, if you're not getting everyone on the same page to achieve, to achieve the consensus, then you feel like sometimes if you don't have to do that, you can do it a lot quicker. So today we're going to talk about the benefit of having a team. And it's true, there are some tasks that are better suited for independent work, but we're going to work with how we can work better together. So we're not saying that every activity should be a team event, but there are certain cases where it's, there is strength in numbers. And so because we can do more together, there's strength in numbers, and there's also diversity in having different people working on something. When you have more than one person working on a project, a problem, or an idea, you get the benefit of more heads and more hands. Each member of the group can take a different task, and that a, a task, especially if it plays to their strength. So one dog alone can pull a sled. Can't pull a sled, but an entire team can do it. So similarly, one person can't launch a rocket, but a team can. And Kyle, I want to think about the most dynamic team I've been on. Me and my husband, we created two babies because we work together. And so some things require us to work with others. And so let's move on. I didn't want to take you off, but I thought I'd throw that in as one of the great teams that we've been on, that I've been a part of. In fact, today's studies show that teams are not only able to achieve more than one individual, they're actually able to ha do more because of the more invite, they have more innovative ideas. So due to a large part, because we have different people with different perspectives. So when we have more people, we have more ideas because more people have more experiences, more knowledge, more differences in our background. And when you have a team from different backgrounds, different ages, different job titles, it promotes a great and healthy discussion. And this discussion can spark inspiration. And so while we have different departments and different units working together, we have different knowledge and different understanding and different ways of doing anything that can actually create a better outcome for us. And while it may take longer to get the group to agree, you're likely to have more options for solutions. And when you work with other people who have different back perspectives, your own viewpoints can be broadened and you grow in the experience. And so let's move forward. I know that we've talked about how frustrating teams can be, but according to the research, teams are best and they actually can make you feel happier. I'd like for you to think about a time when you were a part of a team that you truly enjoyed working with. It might have been at a work or in your personal life or even on an athletic team. So I've already talked about a great team that I've been a part of for 30 years that's absolutely made me happier. Now in the chat, I would want you to post or write some things about a great team that you've been a part of. So go ahead and tell us what great team experience uh, that you had or, or what it was like in the text chat. Again, once you've typed in your comments, make sure you press enter. And we just wanna know, you know, 
what were some of those, uh, you know, uh, characteristics of that great team? And I see Carl has chimed in. There was good communication. I could see that definitely being a pillar and a strong point for a great team, um, whether it's a work team or an athletic team. Uh, great communication skills, professionalism, work or respect, uh, actually working together, a place where you felt value. Uh, now they're coming in fast and furiously. Uh, Sanjeev talked about the Navy being the best team that he's been on. I could see that. Uh, Rashawn said uh, a team that had diverse viewpoints. Um, respect, respect, people working together, good communication, cheerleading squad, everyone knew their role. Uh -huh. I like that. I like that. Um, organizing a benefit for someone with cancer, that was a good team. You had good communication, good coordination. You actually met. Um, so as you can see, Sheree, there are quite a few, uh, you know, different things or uh, categories that we could say are attributed to a good team. Absolutely. Thanks, everyone. And so we can all agree that while we've had some challenging team experiences, we have really had some good ones as well. And so hopefully you will have more good experiences with a team that will keep you wanting to be a part of a team and it'll keep you moving forward to chase that experience again. As we move forward today, you'll begin to see how these types of teams can be built. They don't happen magically on their own, and we need to do things that make them ha that make them happen. So if you take the time to improve good teamwork and skills, you'll improve the odds of getting a being a part of a, a great team and possibly getting a new job. I saw someone wrote, teamwork makes a dream work. And so maybe your teamwork skills can help you get the better job. Your teamwork skills can help you answer more questions and push you forward. Now, the question that we that's on our page is, why is it that we believe that teamwork helps us to be better and to get greater opportunities? Well, the ability to coordinate with others and collaborate in a team is a highly desirable skill set right now. No matter what type of job you're in, the World Economic Forum has been listing teamwork as part of one of the top 10 skills needed in every employee since 2002. So it's projecting that that skill to be at an even higher value, at least until 2030. So teamworking and skill developing in areas of working with a team is very in high demand, especially for hiring teams and com, um, recruiters. So they're looking for people who know how to work in teams. So the teamwork is a skill worth getting better at. But before we move on, I'd like to see if anyone has any questions about the benefits of working with a team. I hope that you see by now that we are pro teams on this particular webinar today. We believe there are some great teams out there and we want you to be a part of being a part of a better team. So let me pause for a minute. Are there any questions around whether being a part of a team is better or not? Because we're saying it is. Studies prove that being a part of teams is better. And so there are great benefits. Are there any questions about the benefits? So if you do have a question about the value of teamwork or, you know, you have another benefit that you would like to add, go ahead and drop that in the text chat. So I don't see any questions, Kyle. Let's keep on rolling. Keep on moving. Here we go. So let's move on to the second part. At the beginning of the webinar, we talked about some of the behaviors that can make teams difficult to work in. And we've also discovered, discussed some of the characteristics to help make a team great. So let's focus more on the qualities that make an individual a productive and important part of the team. So let me stop and ask you a question. What do you think are some important qualities for teamwork? Type that in the chat. Go ahead and type your thoughts about what personality traits a person should have to be a good team member. Open-minded, Amanda, ooh, that's a good last name, Gimignani, Gimignani. Did I say that correctly? Amanda Gimignani, that's what I'm going with. 
Um, but she said open-minded. Tina chimed in intelligent. Uh, Liliana, hope I said that correctly, responsible and reliable. Being a good listener, says Kim, um, listens well. Again, Jason's right on the same path with Liliana, positive attitude, open to communication. Being a good listener was one that's come up a lot, non-biased. So as you can see, there are a lot of good traits uh, with regards to a good team member. Absolutely. And there are many great qualities that lend themselves to successful teaming. And we're going to talk about some specific ones that you've already mentioned. So some of you have already mentioned the ones that we're going to talk about. So let's discuss some strategies and tips that can help improve your team experience. So the first quality that I want to talk about today is the most essential in good teaming. And it's flexibility. I saw somebody write flexibility on there. And so society and work and our personal circumstances keep changing around us. And so how do you adapt to increasing pace of change? How do you respond to change in your working routine and your agency policies? Well, flexibility is the key. Now, sometimes the word flexibility is used with adaptability but they're both the willingness to bend and change with the circumstances. It also means being open to new information or ideas and applying it to the circumstance. You may find that people take inspiration from each other and new and better ideas are coming up. When you hear something different, you can adjust and be flexible to it. So being flexible means you are willing to let go of your ideas and pick up one that is better. And, and you don't take it personally. You actively engage in making those changes. So what happens when team members aren't flexible? Tell me what happens when team members are not flexible. Type that in the chat. What happens when they're not flexible? And Tanya chimes in right away. Uh, there's a shutdown. Uh, Jessica, there's disorganization, uh, conflict, uh, thank you. Liliana, friction amongst coworkers. Uh, again, the breakdown uh, they're discussing. Um, Victoria, uh, no, Victoria said poor performance, but uh, who said that before? Goals don't get met. Belinda, um, you know, the work is just not getting done. Um, people need to go their separate ways, and there's hard feelings. There's the power struggle. So as you can see, there's a lot of things that, that happen when individuals are inflexible working within a team, uh, Cherie. Well, thank you, Kyle, and everyone is right. If we or our teams are inflexible, there are some significant consequences. So those consequences are just as you mentioned, people shut down, work not getting done, loss of wages, loss of time, and these are all pretty serious consequences. And if we don't address them, they could result in problems for our organization and even more stress for us. So let's talk about how we can be more flexible and how we can get past being inflexible and create and get past that negativity. If you find yourself in situations where you're being inflexible, I want you to ask yourself, why am I reacting so strongly? Why am I holding on to this particular idea or point so significantly? Now, once you ask yourself those questions, then stop and think about it. Have you seriously considered the other options on the table? Are you actively listening to the other people in the discussion? Are you listening to them actively or are you just listening so that you can defend your own idea? So the first step toward a better team is if we take techniques for active listening. So let's talk about how we can engage in active listening so that we make sure that we're not the part of the inflexibility. So here's a trick for you to remember an active listening process. It's called SOLER, S-O-L-E-R. So the S stands for square up. By this, I mean face the person squarely. Rather than being turned away from them, I want you to face them. O stands for open posture. This means open up your arms and rather than having them crossed across your body. It gives a person a feeling that you're open to their ideas and not closed off. The L stands for lean in. And I mean literally lean toward the person that you're talking to. 
be engaging with them. And so now don't get too close. Now there are some cultures where it may seem intimidating if you get too close, don't make it uncomfortable, but just lean in physically to their idea. The E stands for eye contact. So you wanna make good co eye contact. Now not the staring, glazing, intimidating eye contact, but the eye contact that says, I'm listening to you, I'm open to you, I'm open to your ideas. So make good eye contact with them. And if you need to look away, maybe look down on your notes for a few seconds and then come back and make some more eye contact with them. And then lastly, the R stands for relax. Take a deep breath, relax your posture and run through the S-O-L-E-R checklist again. So when you need to get into the active listening mindset, think solar, square up with the person, open your posture, lean in when they're talking, make good eye contact, then relax, S-O-L-E-R. I would encourage you to try this with people in your life and in your work and even at home. When you give it a try, I think that you'll find people are more responsive and they'll be more engaging with the conversation and then you're now more engaging in the conversation. If you continue to struggle with inflexibility, it may be that you need to be more honest with yourself and honest with your team about why you're holding on to the idea so strongly. They may be able to hold you accountable by asking you more questions and helping to gently nudge you into hearing their viewpoints. So make sure you're not the one that's inflexible. So be more flexible yourself is the first strategy in building better teams. Of course, someone, you may say, oh, well, it's someone else on my team that's being inflexible, not me. Well, we can't change other people. We can only change ourselves and to make sure that you're not the one that's being inflexible. So first, remind yourself, I must be, I must be flexible first. One of the simplest things that we can do to get the behavior that we want is to model it first. So first, we'll have to be open and willing to discuss other people's ideas and ask questions. If a person that we're talking to seems inflexible, maybe we should let them talk first and to show them the behavior that you want back. Remember in the end, the group is about demonstrating account of flexibility and adaptability. And we wanna enter in dis discussions that are helpful and that allow us to get to the level of consensus that we need. So here's how we build consensus. So how can I encourage a team to be more flexible? How can you encourage a team to be more flexible? Let me pause and ask you that question. And Kyle's gonna bring, bring up an activity. Which of the following do you think would allow us to be more effect, allow us to be more effective and encouraging others to be a more flexible flexible around us. A, ask them for more information on why they are opposed to an idea. B, ignore them, they'll get over it. C, model the behavior or D, ask the team member how they would like to contribute. So how would you encourage a team member to be more flexible, to be more flexible? All right, so I'd like for you to notice that I've opened up a, a polling panel, the Slido panel on the right-hand side of the screen. I want you to take your mouse and I want you to click on A, B, C, or D that you feel is the best answer. Um, again, I do see that some of you have chimed in in the chat. If you do have access to the Slido panel, I'd, get pre I'd encourage you to go ahead and tap away on that panel um, just so we can count you in the stats. Um, and Looks like about half the class has chimed in on the Slido panel. Uh, and it looks that half of the class, 68% of the class is saying D, ask the team member how they would like to contribute. And you also have a slew of Ds in the text chat as well, Cherie. I see the Ds in the chat, man. Thanks everyone for participating. These are, our, these are very good ideas and thank you for participating. And as a matter of fact, these good ideas can be used in different circumstances. Now, the one that I'm concerned about, and Kyle, I don't think that you said that anybody chose this. Um, did you see anyone who chose B, ignore them, they'll get over it? I did not. I do okay, see good. some A's in the chat, but I did not see a B. 
Okay, good. Because usually when we are ignoring people, it keeps them from contributing later. So I want to, I'm so glad that no one in here said ignore them. And so eventually people who are ignored are less likely to disagree with the group. And then when they're less likely to agree and they just go along with everything, then we lose the advantage of diversity. We lose the advantage of people having different aspects. So please, if you can, please try not to ignore people, really take their ideas into consideration. Now, the next quality that we'll talk about is communication. So we've got flexibility and communication so far. Communication is the oil that makes the machine of the daily work run smoothly. So it's not surprising that this is a very crucial skill in teams. When we're working together in a team or a team project, you're wrapped up in your part of the work and it can be easy to forget to share your ideas when everybody's around. So for example, the update you get during a quick hallway meeting with one teammate, you may forget to mention that when you get with the rest of the group. So make sure you're expressing good communication with the entire group and information that you get in the hallway, you actually bring it back and share it with the entire group. Likewise, you may re be reluctant to mention that sometimes you haven't done your part and you're very nervous about mentioning and being communicate communicating that you're not to the part that you're supposed to be or you haven't completed the task. Sharing good news and bad news is important to the success of the team. While it may be a little bit embarrassing that you haven't completed your task in the time that has been set aside, everyone on the team needs to know about it. And they may be able to step in and help. So be very open and honest with your team. Communicate during regular check-ins with them. Let them know what's going on. Let them hear about any roadblocks that you're experiencing. If your team members aren't physically close to you, then you can use tools like email, WebEx, Zoom, or even Microsoft Teams to get everyone together so that they're in the loop. Now we've talked about good teams and bad teams earlier in our discussion. And I'd like to ask you a question. Is it inevitable that conflict will arise even on a good team? Hit the yes or no button. Let me ask the question again. Is conflict inevitable on a team? All right, I see some people are in the chat saying yes, but what I would like for you to do is click on the reaction button. Again, that's near the raised button. It uh, looks like a smiley face. And then either click thumbs up for yes, conflict is inevitable, or thumbs down for no. All right. And I see we have, it's kind of a mixed bag, actually, <laughs> um, with regards to, you know, conflict being inevitable and conflict not being inevitable. We have some thumbs, we have a lot of thumbs up, but we also have some thumbs down with regards to this, Cherie. Ooh, Kyle, this is interesting. I wish we had more time, another discussion. Maybe we need to schedule that later because I would really like to hear where people think that, we can have a team and not have conflict. And so I'm gonna move on, but make a note for that. Maybe we need to have a deeper discussion later on. But the answer today is yes, all teams eventually have some type of conflict. Now, I don't mean the fist fighting conflict, but I mean where two ideas don't line up, where we may enter in some type of disagreement. Now that is inevitable, that at some point in time, we will not all agree. And so knowing that that is, is coming because we're different people and diverse ideas, just know that at some point in time, two ideas will conflict. And you're right, Kyle, at some part, no matter whether they're big or small, the team, there will be disagreement. So whenever people work together, it's always best to, dissolve, to try to resolve that conflict quickly. Problems on the team can fester. And so we've got to be able to take those differing opinions and that little bit of conflict and do something with it. We need to resolve it. Conflict needs to be brought up in a respectful way without assigning blame. 
Instead, focus on the problem and the possible solutions. Don't focus on the negativity of disagreement or the person. It's important to keep in mind that conflict is a natural part of life and can lead to even better understanding of your teammates. As we communicate more and communicate respectfully, it will allow you to understand them better and to hear their viewpoints. Speaking of that, if you'd like to learn more about conflict and how to resolve it, you may want to, to take the partnerships in-person class practical skills for resolving conflict. There's that discussion that goes further. So be on the lookout for that in-person class that the partnership offers practical skills for resolving conflict the next time it's held in your, in your, in your area. I think that will be a great discussion. Now, on the other hand, Now, on the other hand, being a part of a team should not always be just work. There can be some fun. And so we can resolve conflict and move on and have better exchanges within the team if we learn to celebrate wins and share laughs. Those type of interactions can help us build trust. That's why so many sports teams do well together. It's not that they don't have conflict, they learn how to resolve conflict and they celebrate the victories that they have. So when you know people better and you have more opportunities to spend time with them in a relaxed setting, it builds conflict and the it builds trust and allows us to move beyond those conflicts in a quicker way. I know that you're going to become, be it's not that you're gonna become best friends with the people that you work with, but it does allow you to get them to know them better. And it somehow, some way, it offers us an opportunity to learn how to reason better with them. And so we learn how to act and, 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 and build better relationships by spending time together in a relaxed environment. One study actually proved that Better, the better way to build teams is that we found that when people interact and celebrate their successes, it gives them a better engagement experience. So if you've been a part of a team, do you think that it helps for you to engage and celebrate those victories to build teamwork? Type yes or no in the chat. Do you think it's helpful if we celebrate victories, if we celebrate victories, we celebrate victories. Yeah, so it just improves our communication. So I'm not only just talking through the conflict, I'm also talking through the great wins and celebrating those victories allows us to be a better part of a team. So let's move forward. What does it mean to you as a team member to be a better part of a team? First, it means that you have to be transparent and use clear communication strategies. You can also help avoid misleadings and confusion among the team. Being transparent means you speak up even if the idea confuses you or if you don't agree. So we've got to be transparent. Transparent, by the way, does not mean being rude but it is just a way to be honest about your feelings. And it'll allow, it'll allow the team to get to know you a little bit more. The second part of being a part of a good team is listening actively. So practice giving the person who is speaking your full attention. We've talked about active listening before in the solar. And so really listening helps us to resolve conflict and to share ideas and to build trust. And this skill really takes practice. So I really want you to practice the S-O-L-E-R. And so keep practicing. It may be a little bit cumbersome on the front end, but keep practicing and keep trying at it. The third thing in order to build greater teams is to be willing to ask questions. If you want to get to know someone better, you want to resolve conflict, you want to build trust, ask more questions. It allows the communication to be open. I just start with small questions like, how are you doing? What, what, what do you have going on today? So that builds communication, it builds rapport, it builds trust. 
If your team isn't good at communicating and you want to be, remember that practice makes perfect. Every time you connect and meet with one another, practice your good communication skills. If you make a mistake, don't be afraid to say you're sorry and try better next time. If you feel like you're not doing the best, keep practicing. This is a useful skill that we need to use every day. So now we've talked about being a good part, a part of a good team. We've talked about being flexible. We've talked about using good com communication. We've talked about being transparent. We've talked about being open. We've talked about checking in with your team. We've talked about celebrating victories. Now let's go to practice. Let's look at a team that is having some communication problems. And let's talk about how we can help them. What could you do personally as one of their team members to help improve this problem? Type it in the chat. Sam, and so here's the scenario. Sam has held back important information from the team so that he looks good. And he's done that several times now. People are often complaining about him behind, his, behind their back. So what strategies would you use if you were a part of the team? Type that in the chat. All right, so we've got Sam, and he's holding back important information from the team so that he looks good. And now we have people complaining about it. And I see Julie chimed in right away that she would talk to him about it, be up front with it. Um, uh, uh, Amy says that she would ask why he's not sharing the information. Uh, Shaniqua would also talk to him about it. Uh, Belinda says advise his information. Oh, now they're coming in fast and furiously, and that one went away from me. Um, advise his information is important for the team and explain how we can all benefit. I like that. Um, ask him more questions to get him to talk about it. Um, you know, ask Sam for regular meetings to discuss the matter, regular updates. Um, I, someone said I'd ask Sam why he isn't sharing the information. So you yeah. can see two different approaches from it, you know, just asking him about the information, asking him why he's not sharing the information, but it looks like the majority of the folks on the call today would be open and talk to him um, at, at the least. Good, and that's exactly the right answer. Thanks, Kyle. And so I love the fact that you guys are direct enough to talk to Sam because that's what it's gonna take. So talk to Sam first. Give him um, some, some feedback of, hey, Sam, here's what the pattern that we've been seeing. And then ask, what can I do to help you? And, and so the first is try and start with talking with Sam. Sam, let's get daily updates so that we're on track. And then if Sam continues in the behavior, then that may be where we take it up to the next level. But it's never a good idea to talk about Sam behind his back and gossip because it diminishes the trust of the team. And so there's an old saying, if you'll talk about Sam with someone, somebody's talking about you. And so it's true. So we don't ever want to develop the practice of talking about someone behind their back. We want to do, as you said, speak to them directly and then if it continues, we escalate it to a supervisor or something, but we never start gossip behind their back because we don't want to diminish trust. If there isn't a lot of trust in your team right now, remember every interaction with your team is a chance to practice active listening, transparency, flexibility. All of those things build trust. So we need to get to know each other in order to communicate better with them. So let's move on the third aspect of a good team. And I know that you're not surprised because I saw it in the chat, respect. Respect and mutual respect makes teams more effective. In research, I talked about a moment ago about the openness in teams. Well, there's another statistic. 94% of people in the study said that they feel mutual respect as an important aspect of the team that is very important. So respect and teamwork is about being non-judgmental and using non-judgmental language. It's being able to understand and be understood in a respectful way. An interesting study involving doctors found that they failed more often when they felt insulted and belittled. They failed in their experiences when they felt disrespected. 
And so sometimes respect can come up as rudeness or it can come up as just being, just ignoring them. In teams, we want to, we don't want to be rude. We want to be respectful. We want to actively listen and work toward a solution that works for all of us. When we are respectful, we can increase the feelings of psychological safety. It builds trust in the room. It builds trust within people and people want to be a part of the team. When they feel, when people feel they're not safe or that they are being ridiculed or made fun of, they pull back and they feel unease and they're feeling more stress. And this creates that psychological, they feel unsafe psychologically. So make sure that we're being respectful and not rude so that we don't create more stress within our teammates. So how can you become more respectful? I'm glad you asked that question. So using non-judgmental language goes a long way. Please and thank you are very good small additions to your conversation that you can make. But sometimes that's just not enough, it's just using good words. We have to treat people in a certain way. Now there's a golden rule that says treat people like you wanna be treated. But because of the diversity, maybe people don't wanna be treated like I think is okay. Maybe you need to learn about what they wanna be treated. So often ask, how should I engage you? How do you want to be treated so that I can make sure that I'm treating you as you want to be treated, not just I, how I want to be treated? We talk about the difference between the golden rule and the platinum rule. And the platinum rule is if you want to show people respect, treat them how they want to be treated. And so maybe they don't need recognition or maybe they do. Maybe you're the type of person that doesn't need praise, but maybe they do. So you've got to be able to give them that. So now that we've talked about being respectful on a team, let's go and practice a scenario. Here's a scenario that says that you see a growing pattern of disrespect on your team and you'd like to stop this behavior before it gets out of hand. So for example, Marsha keeps interrupting people when she has a good idea. So as her teammate, what should you do? What should you do? Type it in the chat. We want to be respectful. Go ahead and drop your ideas. Oh, sorry. Go ahead and drop your ideas of how to fix the issue of disrespect with Marcia or Marcia uh, in the chat. And I'm seeing, I feel that acknowledging them helps to not be rude. So maybe we uh, acknowledge uh, Marcia, ask her to please let the person finish. Um, ask if she could jot that down uh, and then we could circle back to it. Um, uh, listen first, uh, you can tell her that I'm not finished. So she's saying the individual who's being erupted should, interrupted should stand up. Um, uh, so it's kind of a mixed bag. Some people are saying listen to her so she doesn't shut down. Um, other people are saying, you know, uh, that the person that's speaking should finish. I like that one by Sonia. Uh, maybe we need to set some guidelines for the team. Yeah. Um, you know, and tell her to calm down and raise her hand. Again, we might want to just kind of, you know, how we phrase that, but I completely get what you're saying, Kim. Um, so you can see there's, there's quite a few different ways in which people would, as uh, Marcia's teammate, go about this. Absolutely, and those are all great. And so you're right, we don't want Marcia, Marcia to stop bringing her ideas and we don't want to shut her down, but she can't take over the room and disrespect other people. And so I love the fact that some of you are already chiming in saying, have her to write it down, set some ground rules, absolutely. Um, in some of my teams, I have a talking stick. So the person who's talking, you can't talk until you have the stick in your hand. And so having her to write those ideas down, setting guidelines, all of those are great ideas. You guys are on to it. Good, good job, everyone. So now that you have a good understanding of that, of respect, let's move on to the last one, responsibility. And so our final, our final quality for an effective teammate is responsibility. To a large extent, this is where, where, we t where teamwork is all about, sharing the load. So we are working responsibly and accountably to do our part. In a good team, instead of feeling like we have to do it all of ourselves, we can rely on others to do parts for us and work with us. But in order for us to do this, you need to have a good understanding of what your task is and what your ultimate goals are. Once you understand the shared goals of the team, it's time to figure out 
how best we can complete the task. So here's another scenario. What do I tend to do when someone does not share their load? So everybody's working on a team. They each have equal parts. At some, part, at some time, you may run into a situation where you feel that one person is not doing their part. What would you do? Would you A, ignore the behavior, B, become resentful, C, complain to others, or D, tell the supervisor? And I see that Kyle's brought up a poll. Yep, so as you notice, I've brought the uh, slide will pull up on the right-hand side. I want you to take your mouse and click on A, B, C, or D that you feel is the best answer. Um, and they are coming in. I've got about 10 votes right now. Um, I'll give it another 30 seconds. I do see some people chiming in in the chat. It makes it hard for me to do the math, but I will try. <laughs> Monique said D, she added a D, and Carl added an A. Uh, so those two kind of makes those two neck and neck. Um, now, we do have people tapping on all the categories, Cherie, uh, but the category right now that um, is in the lead, <laughs> they're tapping on C. Uh, it says, which response uh, have you seen most often? And they are typing in C complain to others oh wow 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 okay well you got some good insight so let me address each one of these answers individually kyle let's just do it like that so let's go to the first one ignore their behavior and so we're just going to break them down and, and just do them one at a time to see that make sure that we are capturing each one so the first one is ignore their behavior if you don't like confrontation, you may be tempted to ignore their behavior and just let it, somebody else carry their weight. The problem with this is that you won't stop the behavior and you may encourage them to continue to do it. So that's why we don't want to do that. The second one is become resentful or complain. So the two responses seem very similar. One is inter internal state, resentment, and the other is an external state, complaining to others. Now, this leads to a little bit of negativity on the team because you're feeling a certain way about them, resentful, and then you're complaining about them to others, talking about the behind their back. Now, we covered talking about people behind their back and complaining about others to someone else previously when we talked about um, Sam in his situation. So we don't want to get in the practice of talking about people behind their back or complaining to others. We want to be up front and talk about it. And so let's look at the next one. Tell the supervisor. Even when you're frustrated, your first step should not be go to the person's supervisors. It's asking for trouble. Your teammates will see you as untrustworthy and maybe even a tattletale. Sooner or later, your supervisor is going to ask you or your team for a status update. And when that happens, you can always say, we got most of our work done, but a few things are, have not been completed. And then let the supervisor ask for the details. So that's a good lead in. So tell the supervisor, hey, here's what we've done and here's what hasn't been done. And then you let the supervisor ask the questions. We've also talked about some things that we shouldn't do in the, in the situation. So knowing those things of what we shouldn't do, here's what we should do. Before you do anything, consider whether you're pulling your own weight first. Check your own self first before you start trying to assess someone else. Make sure you're finishing on time with your task. Make sure you're being fair. And if you have a genuine complaint about a person not sharing your, their load, you should talk to them directly. You should focus on the issue at hand, be respectful, talk about the job, not talk about them. Avoid reading bad intentions into their actions. Remain civil and respectful. Ask them more questions. Stay calm. If all of this fails, you can then speak to the supervisor. And make sure you have documented as much as possible. Document, hey, I tried to help them on this day. I offered my suggestions on this day. I asked them for regular updates. And if it's still a problem, then you take it to the supervisor, still talking about the problem, not the particular person. And talk about the impact of the work be not being done, not the person. 
So before we move on to the last aspect of our webinar today, as I hasten to the close, I want to stop here for a second and see if there's any question. I covered a lot. We covered flexibility, communication, respect, respect. Um, we've covered so much. How do I manage myself on the team? What should I do? Responsibility, sharing the load. Are there any questions about anything that I've covered so far? So if you do have a question, go ahead and click that raised hand button and we'll give you the floor where you can drop it in the chat. Can you send the solar with the meaning of each letter? Um, I believe that we can, I believe we can send one of the slides, um, but I can also, I can go back up and I can copy and I can paste that back into the chat. So I will do that as well. So you'll have it in the chat. Uh, if you just give me a moment, I'll go back and I'll find that. Um, and I can drop that in the chat during our question and answer period. But I also think that we can, I believe that we can send out a copy of the slides. So I'll find that out. And if we can, then I'll just, I'll have that sent out to everybody in the group. Okay. Well, as we hasten, let's look um, at the last scenario of the day. Last scenario of the day. And so... Adam, Maria, and Sanjay, we're getting ready to apply these strategies. So let's just fast forward to the case scenario. And we'll talk about how to use all of the things we learn into, into the practice. So here's the scenario. Adam, Maria, and Sanjay are working on a project where they've been asked to recommend a new way to track inventory. Adam has a strong opinion, but the other three have a different idea how they like to recommend. And so Let's talk, Adam doesn't feel like his teammates are giving his idea a fair chance and he doesn't like the idea that they are suggesting. He feels a certain way that their plan is going to fail. So now here's, here's the question for you. Which major takeaway that we've talked about today should you use? So Adam is very strong in his opinion. He doesn't want to hear from his other teammates. What would you do if you were in that situation? How can you use today's strategies to help Adam? Type it in the chat. What would you use today's strategies to help right, Adam? So I'm just saying, mm -hmm. They're coming in. Actually, Tina just chimed in with regards to one of the things we learned in Solar to square up. Yeah. Um, and she also talked about open posture, leaning in, and eye contact and relax. Those are all of the Solar tips. Excellent. Isaiah chimed in, he would use the S to square up to Adam. Um, what else would we use? Mm -hmm. I see that we would use solar. A lot of folks would want to use solar to make sure that we were communicating effectively. Um, what about flexibility? Ah, uh, there being, he is. Being Here respectful. Comes. There we yeah. go, being respectful and try to have him communicate his plan so that we can understand. Carl, a guy just took me, yeah, yeah Carl. No, your 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 response was flexible. It was on the money already. Um, uh -huh. Let me Carl see. Carl also Any has others? respect. Here. Carl Chestnut has the respect. Yep, being adaptable. Too. Yep, you got it. It's so coming. Can, you guys got it. Excellent, excellent job. Absolutely. So as we move toward the close today, just want to remind you to be flexible. Good use, good communication. Be respectful. Be responsible. Make sure you're doing your part and helping others carry your load. Now let's talk about key takeaways today because the greatest part about training is that you're able to take something away and use it immediately. So if you would, what would you be able to take away today and use immediately? Um, I see Terrell chimed in right away, versatility. Versatility. I would imagine in his communication styles, being able to switch it up depending on the person I'm seeing. Shaniqua or Shanique, uh, I'm going to go with Shaniqua. I hope I said that correctly. Um, <laughs> flexible, solar. Uh, Isaiah said just to communicate, being a better listener. Again, I'm a firm believer in listening to understand versus listening to reply. I think mm -hmm. that we go wrong as human beings in that area a lot, whether it's personally on the job or whatever. Um, active listening, Tanya chimed in. Being transparent, I think, is another big one that we as human beings should work on when we're talking about communicating. Um, so as you can see, um, uh, Sheree, there are a lot of takeaways from today's session. 
Well, great. I'm so happy to hear. I'm glad, hopefully you got something out of today that's going to make you a better team member going forward. And so I want to thank you, Kyle, and thanks everybody on today's webinar. Hopefully you got something great. Now I'm going to turn it back over to you, Kyle, and give them the directions to end of the day. All right. Um, and I just, again, thank you, Sheree, uh, for taking us through today's webinar. It was excellent. Before we wrap up, I just want to mention, um, when you close the webinar window, our survey, our online survey is going to pop up. It's going to pop up in a different window. That's our evaluation. Um, that's your opportunity to tell my bosses, you know, how badly I treated you over the past hour. I'm just joking. In all seriousness, that's where you're going to get the opportunity to let us know what you liked, what you didn't like, what you'd like to see in the future. Again, we utilize all of that evaluation data to make sure that we are bringing products and services to you that are going to meet your needs. Um, so I definitely need you to make sure that you fill that out. Uh, another thing, you'll notice on the screen a QR code. If you scan that QR code, that will take you directly to um, the upcoming webinars. You can search our Skills for Success calendar. It will take you to our upcoming webinars, and it will also allow you to view our in-person classes to see what may you know, meet your need, what you may or may not uh, want to take. Um, now, we do have a little bit of time if you want to do a question and answer period. Uh, so if you do have questions, you can hang on. Um, what I will say is, uh, before you go, I just want you to know, uh, if you haven't heard it today, I appreciate you. On behalf of Cherie, on behalf of the partnership, and on behalf of New York State, I just want you to know you're appreciated. Um, that's not something that we hear every day, but the fact of the matter is everyone who is on this call represents the rubber that meets the road when it comes to the state of New York getting its business done. So if you haven't heard the thank you, if you haven't heard I appreciate you, I want you to hear it right now um, because you, your work, and what you do is heavily appreciated. With that being said, it's four minutes after two. If you need to sign off because you have other responsibilities, I completely understand. Um, and you can just uh, go ahead and click out, but please make sure you tap on that um, evaluation. Definitely need you to tap on that evaluation. It's going to pop up in a new internet window, um, so make sure you hit that. Uh, if you do have questions and answers, you can go ahead and raise your hand, and I'll give you the floor, or you can drop them in the chat, um, and we will answer and respond in 